Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector channel. Today on the bench, we have a, a very nice watch, a Tudor Oyster, uh, a, an old one, you can see, with the rose logo. Um, so let's first check if the watch is working. Uh, you see you have a, a screw down crown with this beautiful like a second hand which is beating, so that's the first good news. I'm winding the watch a bit, just checking the if uh, the hour can change. Yeah, that looks good. Um, so yeah, I really love Tudor and I really like this one, especially with the, with the dial, which is a very special dial. You see with the Onycom feature, like kind of texture on a dial. We put it on a time grapher and we can see the result. Actually, the amplitude is quite good at 266 degree. The bit error at 1.3 is a bit high. So we see if we can address that. And uh, you see the watch is gaining around 20 seconds per day. So I think we can improve that. It's not that bad for, for an old watch. Um, but yeah, I bought this watch on eBay, so I like to do a service just to make sure everything is okay. You see there the O-ring, like uh, the gasket, sorry, is uh, popping out, so that's not good. And uh, I just open it with my rubber ball. You can see the Tudor engraving inside. So yeah, the case is a Tudor case. On some older watches as well, you will have some Rolex uh, sign because Tudor obviously is part of uh, the Rolex group. And the crown actually is sign uh, is a is a Rolex crown on the on the on the crown. It's not a Tudor. So we are going to take the movement out. And basically, what we're going to do in this video, we are going to do a full service of this watch. We are going to disassemble it fully, clean it properly, and uh, reassemble it and oil it the, the the proper way, and see if we can improve on the result as well that we saw uh, earlier on the time grapher. So first, I'm taking out the winding stem and the, couple, the the two clamps which are holding the mechanism in the case. That's the second one with the screw there. And we should be able to take out this uh, beautiful movement as well. I, I love the color. It's like Omega, like the Omega movement you can see in my other video as well. They, are, they have this kind of uh, copper color, which is really nice. Look at this beautiful dial. Obviously, you see a bit of... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit dirty, but not too bad. And I love the patina on uh, our markers and the hands. Uh, love this uh, love this watch, and that's why I bought it. And obviously, I'm a big fan of Tudor as well, like the modern watches and all the one, like this one. I really like I really like what Tudor is doing right now. Oh, the first bad news. There is something broken. Look, there is a part broken there. So we'll see a bit later on where this part is coming from, but... I uh, give you a hint that's a part which is in, in a keyless work. Yeah, that's the uh, first bad news. So we see how we can uh, address this issue. So I'm going to take out first, there is a, a ring, which is like uh, uh, making sure that the movement is centered nicely in the case. So we just take out the ring first and we should have access as well to a couple of screws that will, uh, here we go. That's the first one there. I'm releasing the dial fit screw. so just to make sure I release the dial and we should be able to take the dial out of the movement. Just gently, we're going to leave the movement and oh, here we go again. You see a part which is fully loose. I'm just going to take this part and we we'll see a bit later, but the part is okay. It looks like it's okay. So I'm just going to remove the how wheel to get access to the cannon pinion there that I'm removing with the Presto tool. If you have any question as well on the tools, I uh, in the description of the video, I put a couple of tools, like the main tools that I'm using. Obviously, I cannot put everything because yeah, this this uh, this hobby is uh, if you are a tool junkie, it's perfect because you need a lot of tools to do this uh, to do this passion. But yeah, I put some uh, some oil, some uh, tools that I'm using, the main ones. But if you have any question on all the tools that I'm using, just put a comment down below. I will be more than happy to reply uh, to your question. Okay, so first, as always, I will re remove the balance assembly. Then I'm going to remove the pallet fork cock and the pallet fork. Just taking out now the ratchet wheel. Checking, oof, that's a lot of play there on... Uh, that's not good. So we see we need to address that. And look, there is a lot of handshake as well. You see, that's a movement which goes up and down. That's not really good because this means that the parts can touch between each between each other if there is too much play. And that will ruin the amplitude of the watch. Even if we saw that the amplitude actually was not too bad at 266, 
Um, but yeah, that's that's not good because if the play, uh, obviously the parts after the, the, the watch will run and the parts will wear more and more. And if there is too much play, if you, like if you have a couple of parts touching each other, obviously we add some friction and it will ruin the accuracy of the watch. So you don't want to have that much play. You want to have a little bit of play, but not that much. That's not good in a watch. So we see there is some techniques actually to address that without uh, changing the parts. So we see a bit later on when we will reassemble the part. Okay, so I remove the train of wheel. Now removing the barrel bridge. And we, saw, we see the part is, the, the, the watch is not that bad actually. The, the movement is not that dirty. A bit, but not a lot. So I don't know if a service was done not a long time ago or if it was not used a lot. But it's not that bad, and uh, when we see the time on the the result on the time grapher as well, it was it was not that bad as well. So uh, actually, I could have kept the watch, just adjust it, and uh, keep the watch running. It was not running that bad, but yeah, as as always, when I buy a vintage watch, a uh, vintage watch, sorry, I always prefer to to give it a service just to make sure we start on a on a on a good base, if you want. Okay, so now we move on the die side, on the keyless work. And, uh, oof, that's a bit sticky. And you see a lot of grease underneath. So that's not good. That's a part that was broken. You see there is a long arm here, which is actually at the end there where I'm grabbing it. It's, it's broken. Um, so, yeah, that's we need to be changed. We need to find a new one. See what we can do about that. Moving the yoke spring there. The yoke. And just the last few parts with the clutch and the winding pinion there with the clutch. Okay, just removing the last few parts like where you have the cap jewels just to make sure everything gets clean in the machine. Just use some peg wood to clean the jewels again just to make the oil and grease loose and remove it as much as possible before we put it in a cleaning machine. With on both sides, obviously, and with on all the jewels. So we did it on the on the main plate there, but we're gonna do it on the bridge. It just place back the balance because that's the best place to to keep it during washing. Again, we're going to remove the jewels as well on the balance assembly just to clean them properly in a cleaning machine. So you see there, that's a strange spring, actually on the. Most of the vintage shoes, I found, I found this uh, kind of shock spring there, clover shape, which is need to twist like a few degrees and that you can open like this. It's quite nice, actually. I, I like this system. Okay, removing the cap jewels again, using a bit of Rodico to grab it. The next assembly, we need to disassemble the, the barrel assembly. It's not that dirty, removing the barrel arbor there. And the spring looks good. It looks like it's in good shape. It's not too old. And that's it. We have all the parts. We're going to put them in a cleaning baskets. And all of them will go into the cleaning machine to get clean. Remove all the dirt, oil, grease. And we will reassemble all of them and grease, grease them as well the proper way. Okay, so during the cleaning, I will use the opportunity to tell you that I have a, a Patreon page. Um, so on my Patreon, you can go and support the channel because, yeah, I think this content is quite unique and uh, you cannot find them like on TV or whatever. So if you want to uh, support me uh, putting better content, you can go on Patreon and subscribe to one of the plans. And I would like to thank my existing patrons. So Shelby, Jan, Christian, Cornet, Alan, Swami, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim and Gregory. Thank you so much for supporting me. Uh, I would have never imagined I will have so many people supporting uh, my channel on, on Patreon. And if you want to join, you can go over, over there. You will enjoy the video without any commercial. And I put as well the video a bit uh, ahead of time compared to YouTube. So you will enjoy uh, a preview of uh, the video every time. Okay, so now the parts are clean, rinsed, and now they just finished to dry. So we should have perfectly clean parts that we can reassemble. The first part would be to rewind 
the mainspring in this uh, winder from Bergeon. Just have the last end there that need to be twisted to go inside. There we go. And when it's done, I can remove the handle. And we have the main spring will be fully winded and ready to get back into the barrel. Just putting a few drops of grease before putting the main spring just to make sure it's properly lubricating, lubricated on the bottom there. And we are putting the barrel arbor. So actually, Tudor, uh, until I think very recently, so now the, the modern watches use uh, Tudor caliber, but for a long time, and this is, a, this is a, the case for this watch, Tudor was using uh, ETA movement. So this is, you see the movement that we saw with like nice colors and a Tudor engraving as well. So it's engraved with the, with the brand on the movement, but actually the, the base movement is an ETA movement. So that makes it quite simple because ETA, obviously they produce a lot of movement uh, not only for Tudor, but for other brands. So if you have any issues, like for example, we have a, we have a broken part on this movement, it's much easier to find a, a, a part on a, on an ETA because they produce a lot more of this movement and it's a lot cheaper as well because obviously there is more parts. Um, so yeah, that's why I, I like to work as well on, uh, on this Tudor because I found them so nice and I have a, a bond if you want to the brand. But uh, yeah, as well as the movement that they use, they are very easy to maintain and the parts are quite easy to find. So if you have any issue with uh, a broken part or even if you lose a part when you, when you, when you assemble a watch, it can happen at the beginning especially. So yeah, that's the nice, uh, a, a, nice, a nice point with this type of watch using ETA movement. Okay, so now I'm just oiling the jewels for the balance assembly. Just putting a drop of uh, 9010, which is a uh, Moebius oil, especially for, for this, uh, to lubricate this, the balance staff of your main, of your, sorry, uh, balance assembly. Just closing the spring there. We just do the reverse process that we did when we remove it. So that I know, like, all the, all the jewels there are fully oiled. So when I will be uh, assembling the watch, I just don't need, I know they're already oiled and will be ready to go. For this one, I use my automatic oiler from the other side just to put one drop of oil. We do the same on this one. Just place back the capstone, just put it in place with the screw. And from the other side, we are just with the automatic oiler there, just going to put a drop of oil right in the, in the center of the jewel. Okay, so we can restart the assembly. So first, remember there is this uh, center wheel, which has a, a small bridge on top with a jewel there, which is a bit different compared to some movement, but on uh, ETA movement, you, you, you found it quite a lot. That's why I put the bridge and the two screws there to make sure it stay in place. And now we're going to put as well the barrel assembly. So remember, we just rewind the mainspring, grease it and put it, uh, put it in properly. Just need to realign all the parts. Mm, there is too much play there. So you remember, we need to address this issue. So we're going to take the bridge and I'm going to use hammer time. You can see in another video with uh, my stacking set. I'm just going to reduce the hole just ever so slightly. You see now it's too small, like it doesn't fit anymore. That's what we want. Actually, it's, uh, it's normal. And what I'm going to do uh, with a, a smoothing brush, I'm just going to open it just ever so slightly just to make sure it fits perfectly on a, on, a, on a barrel arbor. And that's it, we reduce the play. So you see like this is a smoothing brush, it's a very smooth surface and we are going to just open the hole a tiny bit. And normally when we're gonna put it in place, we're just gonna see a bit later on now. When we put it like it will should fit fully. There we go. 
just going to put the screw there. To hold the bridge in place. And let's check the play. No play anymore, just a tiny, tiny bit. And you see it's turning, it's moving freely. That's what you want, to move freely, but without too much play. So obviously, as always, we lubricate the, the different points, which are in contact metal to metal. And we assemble the click. And we can carry on by assembling the rest. So we're going to put the crown wheel and the ratchet wheel. Reverse threaded, you see this one? I'm turning the opposite direction, what you should do normally. So that's what you need to be careful when you have a crown wheel with uh, a screw right in the center. It's most of the time reverse threaded. So just be careful, especially when you remove it, because if you unscrew it the normal way, you will damage the thread. And if the thread is damaged, you are a bit in trouble. So that you need to be really careful with the, with the crown wheel when you have a center uh, center screw. Yeah, I just removed, you see, I just removed the wheels there by magic because, yeah, the this, the train of wheel was not fitting because the train of wheel go underneath the crown wheel and the ratchet wheel. So, yeah, sometimes, like, yeah, I did not think about it. So now I just put the train of wheel in place. Just going to put the bridge on top of it, which is holding all the wheel there, so I just need to make sure I uh, line them in the jewels. Just very, very gently, and when it's done, everything will fall into place, and all the wheel will turn freely. See, one is turning, but the escape is not turning yet, so just need to make sure the escape is in a position. Up, oh, you saw the bridge just going down. That's a good sign. There we go. No, that's not in place yet. And here it is. You see that all the wheels are turning together. So it means that they're in place. So we can secure that by putting the screws on a bridge. Just putting back now the crown and the ratchet wheel. You remember that I just put a, a bit too soon before. Okay, so we move to the dial side where we're going to assemble the keyless work starting with the winding pinion that I just greased, putting the clutch and the winding stem through it. Oiling all the pivot points for the different parts and wheels that we are going to assemble uh, later. So like that is done. I go just put like of parts and some grease in the middle of the clutch where the yoke is going to go through and the yoke spring which is a very strong spring so you just need to be careful when you put it in place there we go that's it is in place perfect the last few wheels and first we put the cannon pinion before we put the minute wheel there we go the cannon pinion is in place this parts this plate that will cover like a couple of wheels there very very small screws just need to be uh, very patient with uh, and uh, very careful when you handle these uh, small screws and you remember there, there was a, a broken part. So what I've done, I bought this movement. Like I said, it's an ETA movement, so you can find plenty online. And I think I bought this movement for like, uh, I don't know, like maybe 15 euro or less than 20 euro or $20 if you want. Um, so yeah, and I have a lot of parts on it. So even later, if I work on this type of movement, I will have a lot of, uh, a lot of spare parts if I need to. So I just took the part that I needed. And uh, so that's a setting lever spring with the arm. You remember that was broken. So here we go. I'm just going to put it in place. But first, 
just need to grease a couple of points there, which are contact metal against metal. So just to remove friction and reduce wear, just going to put some grease. And that's the parts that I just uh, got on my uh, donor movement. Again, greasing. And let's see if it's working. Yeah, it looks good. Now we are time setting position. We have a couple of positions. So it's a standard watch and the other one. Yeah, that looks, it looks like he does the job. That's perfect. Okay, so before I move to the other side, just going to oil the last few joules. Going to do the same on the balance side, oiling the joules that are not oiled yet. Just put the beautiful palette fork in place. Again, going to line it on the on the jewel, like the pivot points. The palette for cocks that go on top of it, and we can secure of that. And normally we're going to arrive at the moment of truth, like uh, see if we can uh, see if we can put the balance and if the movement is beating. And we see now the palette fork is clicking, so that's a good indication. And the balance here, see if we put it in position. See what it does, just gently. Oh, yes, started perfect. Yeah, that's nice. We have a runner, so that's good. Question now is, how well is it running compared to when we disassemble? And actually, it was a couple of things that's a bit... Uh, uh, there was too much play in the barrel. So you see now, I'm reducing reducing the barrel by, again, hammering the center. And we did the same process as what we did on the, on the, bar, on the, bar, on the bridge, sorry. We reduce the hole and we enlarge it slightly bit just to make sure there is no play. And what I'm doing now with a piece of wood, I'm just polishing with a, a polishing paste the inside there where you have the barrel arbor, you want to have the smoothest uh, uh, surface just to make sure like there is no friction. And if there is no friction, the amplitude will be better. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm polishing the bridge as well that I reduced a bit earlier. Polishing, you see with a, another wheel, like a buffing wheel, I'm polishing the barrel arbor. And obviously I reassemble everything. So now, I will just do a very light clean uh, on the dial because you see the dial is a bit marked. So I'm just using like with a cotton swab, just ever so slightly, just a wrench uh, with, a, with a special product there, just to remove any dirt or as, as much dirt as I could on the, on the dial. Even if it was not a big difference, just a, a quick clean uh, to remove like any, any, uh, small uh, spot of uh, of dirt give it uh drying it very quickly and look at the dial looks quite quite nice actually a bit less uh, brown like compared to before it was like a bit more dark at some places same on hand i just do a quick polish with this tool just to give it a little shine it's not a ultra polish like very but just to give it a little shine i'm gonna do the same on the minute 10 we just did it on a hour hand just gonna do it on a minute hand and as well the beautiful uh, blued second hand. Here we go, here is this, uh, the second hand that I was talking about. Just to give it a, a little shine. Okay, so we put the our wheel, just put the spring and now we put the dial back. Oh, the dial is looking quite nicer actually compared to compared to when I I got it. It's a, a, a tiny improvement, but a nice improvement. Okay, so we are reinstalling now the hand. So first, uh, our hand. Just going to align the minute hand. it and let's see six o'clock yeah the alignment looks quite good between hour and minute hand yeah that's not bad 
So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the result. Nice second. I love this color on the second hand. So nice. The contrast on the white dial. Beautiful. And when we put it on a time grapher, you see the amplitude went up at 284, but the bit error is still at 1.3. So now we're going to adjust the bit error because 1.3 is uh, a bit too high for me. Uh, so I'm going to remove the power. And actually this one, uh, you cannot adjust the bit error um, easily. You need to disassemble the balance to be able to adjust the bit error. And I will show you how to do it. So I'm removing the power, just waiting that the watch come to a stop. There we go. That's it. Just going to take out the balance. Just checking now which way the pallet fork is uh, hanging and see uh, which direction I need to adjust it if you want. So here we go. We are going to take out this screw. Now we are, should be able to take the balance and the hairspring out of the balance cock. That's it. And with a screwdriver blade, we're just going to put a screwdriver blade there on the collet of the, and we're just going to turn it ever so slightly, just a tiny bit. That's it. And we are going to put it back together again. And this rotation of uh, the collet there will realign and move the Ampers joules. You see that's uh, the pink point that you see on the bottom. And this will affect the bit error. So we see at the end, obviously I, I had to do it a couple of times just to find the, the right number. We see at the end which kind of uh, result we can get on uh, on a time grapher if we if we manage to improve the the bit error. The dial is the sorry the crystal is not bad. So we're just going to give it a, a gentle polish with uh, some poly watch with uh, with a glove and some poly watch. I don't want to use and do it on a polishing machine because. It's almost perfect, so it's just like some very tiny scratches. So with Poly Watch, it will do a good job. And now that it's done, we can recase the movement and the dial. Just going to center it. Going to put the ring. You remember that we just removed at the beginning. That keeps the movement nice and center in the case. Here we go. Just need to align with the hole where we're going to put the winding stem. That's it. Now it looks like it's, uh, it's more or less aligned. Perfect. We're going to put, like I said, the winding stem through it. I changed as well, I did not put it on a video, but I changed uh, the gaskets on the crown and in a crown tube, just to have a brand new one. You see, this is a, a screw down crown. Now it's screwed, so it's in place. Just put the case clamp, the first one. It's a bit hard to put, la, and uh, the screw that's keeping the case clamp in place. Do the same thing on the other side. It's a bit tight, yeah? Just need to make sure it's in the groove there. There we go. You can put the screw in place. Not easy to put because it has a an angle there. There we go. Gently. Okay, so we can close. I just put as well a new gasket on a case back and we can close it. And I will use this beautiful new press that I have from Orotech. I put a link down in the description if you want to buy this customized press. It's so nice and I'm so happy. Like when I, it's the first time that I use it on this. Uh, on this one, so easy to use, so smooth. I had a Chinese copy and from Bergeon and this, this one is so much better and the look as well of it, I love it. Going to demagnetize the watch before we put it on the time grapher and see which kind of result we are getting. And look at it, the bit error is at 0 0.3, so 
more than happy and the amplitude went up to 280 above 280 and it's gaining like four seconds a day so much better results than what we had at the beginning uh, the amplitude is uh, like 20 to 30 degree higher and the bit error a lot lower and obviously we adjusted the rate just gaining a few seconds and this watch was already beautiful but now it's even more beautiful after a restoration and a quick clean so i hope you like the video and this one will stay in my collection with my other two door and i see you next time bye bye